Welcome to Electron Line. We're going to do the exact same problem that we did using the method of convolution before, where we realized that if the function is written in the frequency domain as the product of two functions, we can solve for that by taking each portion of it, finding the inverse Laplace transform, and then finding the solution by taking the convolution of those two. But now what we're going to do is hopefully get the same result when we use a traditional method by doing partial fractions. In other words, we can say that y of t is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of y of s, which is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of the product of 1 over s squared times 1 over s minus a. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that we can write that y of s as being equal to 1 over s squared times 1 over s minus a, which can be written as a over s plus b over s squared plus c over s minus a, and solve for a, b, and c, and then, then take the inverse Laplace transform of each of these three individual portions. Okay, to do that, what we need to do is we need to multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. So we're going to take this equation right here and multiply the left side and the right side by the product of these two, which means on the left side we get 1, and on the right side we get a times s times s minus a plus b times s minus a plus c times s squared. And then when we work this out, we can say that 1 equals a s squared minus a times a s, this is a small a over here, and then here we get plus b s minus b times small a and plus c s squared. And now we can compare the left side to the right side. Notice we don't have any s squared terms on the left side, which means that 0 equals a plus c, because we have an a s squared here and we have a c s squared over there. Next, what we can do is say there's no s term on the left side, so 0 is equal to, we have an s term over here, which is minus a times a, and we have an s term right here, which is plus b, and we don't have any s terms there, and finally, we have the constant term 1 is equal to, we don't have a constant term here, we don't have, oh, we have one here, so we have b would be equal to, 1 would be equal to minus ba, which means from here that b is equal to minus 1 over a. Well, if b is minus 1 over a, then we can solve for a using the second equation. So we can say that 0 is equal to minus big A times small a, and plus B would be minus 1 over a. Moving this to the other side, we can say that 1 over a is equal to minus a times a. And finally, moving the a and the minus across, we can say that a is equal to minus 1 over a squared. So now we have B and a. All we need to do now is find c, since a is equal to, since 0 is equal to a plus c. From this, we could then conclude that c is equal to minus a, and since a is, mm, I forgot the minus, the minus 1 over a squared, then c would be equal to plus 1 over a squared. All right, now that we know what a, b, and c are, we can say that this can now be written y is a function of s, can be written as a over s, and a is 1 over a squared. So 1 over a squared over s, b is negative, so minus b, which is 1 over a, divided by s squared, and c is 1 over a squared, and I keep forgetting my minus here, don't I? Minus, okay, and plus 1 over a squared over s minus a. So now we can go ahead and take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation, which means that y of t is equal to minus 1 over a squared times 
1 over s is simply 1, or the unit transfer function, so we just call it 1, minus 1 over a times t, and here we can write it as plus 1 over a squared times e to the positive a times t. And factoring out a 1 over a squared, we can say that y is a function of time, is equal to 1 over a squared times minus 1, this would be uh, minus a times t, and here this would be plus e to the a t. And you can see that you get the exact same result by using our traditional method rather than taking the method of convolution. But nevertheless, the method of convolution can be a very handy method, especially if this traditional method becomes very difficult to implement, then it may be much easier to go ahead and just use the method of convolution. So therefore, the more tricks that you have in your bag, so to speak, the easier these types of problems become. And that's why we do it.